Welcome everyone, and thanks for joining us today. Bienvenue à tous nos diplômés et amis du monde entier. My name is Luciano Diorio. I am a proud graduate of the Faculty of Arts and the president of the McGill Alumni Association. The McGill Alumni Association represents McGill's global community of more than 275,000 alumni in more than 180 countries. Our role is to support our alumni around the world and ensure that our graduates remain engaged and connected to our university. I'm here today with one of my fellow alumni and the principal of McGill, Professor Suzanne Fortier. Last year, I had the great pleasure of hosting this event, and I am delighted that I was asked to come back today for an encore performance. I'm also delighted that despite the continuing challenges of the pandemic, our alumni community can still come together using technology to connect us across the city, the country, and around the world. So wherever you are, I'm so glad you are with us and staying connected to McGill. For better or for worse, this is our second at-home homecoming, and this one is special because it's McGill's bicentennial year, and there's lots to celebrate and lots to talk about. I'll be asking Principal Fortier a few questions on some of the key topics of interest to alumni, and after our conversation, I'll wrap things up with a few closing words. So let me get started by introducing McGill's principal and vice chancellor, Suzanne Fortier. On behalf of everyone watching, welcome, Professor Fortier. Merci, Luciano. Bonjour, buongiorno. C'est un grand plaisir d'être avec vous de nouveau cette année. And of course, to be with our alumni all over the world. What a thrill to know that people are coming together in this at-home homecoming again this year. Absolutely. Well, Thank you, uh, Principal Fortier. Um, I, have, I have a few questions. You know, certainly I've been, uh, had the chance over the last couple of weeks to be downtown after so long and, and notice that there's a buzz uh, around campus. And I'm just wondering, what is, how is the return to campus proceeding and how is the pandemic currently affecting the university and university life? And what can we expect in the months ahead? Well, you're absolutely right, there's a buzz. It's just wonderful to see our students back again in person at, on our campuses, both uh, at downtown, but also on the Mac campus. There's so much energy, joy, big smiles. Students are really happy to be back in person. Of course, though, uh, this crisis is not over yet. We're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, but it's not over we have to remain extremely prudent. So you see the smile, mainly in the eyes, because many people, of course, will be wearing the mask, keeping distances, there are fewer hugs and kisses, as you can imagine, but we're happy to be back together. And I must say, one of the things that the pandemics showed us is how important it is to be with each other in person. And we have an increased appreciation of life at a university when we're all together. Not only what happens in the classroom, the students love to be in person in the classrooms, but outside the classroom also when uh, we have these encounters with various people uh, that are often just spontaneous encounters. That's just absolutely wonderful. Uh, we work so hard to prepare for the return in person. Uh, we have a team that's been working since last February to prepare looking at different possibilities. Nobody can predict exactly how the pandemics will evolve. And they're working again every day. They've been working every day since uh, uh, the beginning of the pandemic and they're working every day because one of the things we must make sure of is that we very much monitor the situation to make any adjustments that we need to make in order to keep our campus alive with people on our campus. So it's. Uh, it's a challenge this year, but there's so much joy that I think everybody is up to the challenge. Well, I and mean, certainly it, it's nice to see. And I know last year when we chatted, we were really hoping that we would see this day. And so I think we're, we're almost there, or at least halfway there. Um, aside from these ongoing challenges of the pandemic, it's been a very 
busy 2021 for McGill. From your perspective, what are some of the highlights of the year? Oh, many, many highlights. Well, we're welcoming uh, this September the very first cohort of the McCormick Bain Scholars. So this is really a thrill for all of us. Uh, we're welcoming, of course, many students who are starting their university studies, but also those who were not able to be on campus for their studies, those who started their programs online. So it's, it's really great to welcome them. Uh, great professors, uh, many who are just joining us. We've just hired uh, new professors. And I, I'll mention just two, but there are just two examples of the great people who are uh, uh, working with us at McGill. Uh, Professor Yolande Shan, who's our new dean of the school, the Des Hotels School of Management, and uh, Professor Joan Liu, very, very well known around the world for extraordinary role that she played as the head of Médecins Sans Frontières. So it's, it's really great to welcome many of these people to our campus. But there are so many allies. McGill has been very busy uh, participating in the efforts globally to fight this pandemic. And so great, great uh, work and research has been done. It's good also to see, something that really inspired me was to see how quickly our students uh, were able to pivot to transform some activities that are normal in person into the virtual world, particularly, I would note, in the uh, entrepreneurship and the social innovation. So I was worried, I must say, that, that these would not be happening during the virtual period of our lives, but they pivot very quickly. And uh, in fact, uh, I've been able to connect globally because uh, it's easier when you do this virtually. Uh, among, there are so many highlights, Luciano. I don't know if I can go through all of the list, but uh, of course, uh, we were thrilled to welcome our new chancellor, John McCall McBain, who started his term as Chancellor of McGill on July 1st. So these are all great highlights. Uh, I don't know if people have, uh, know that, but uh, some of the research going on at McGill, for ex the research in astrophysics on the fast radio uh, burst uh, was highlighted this year in both the two top uh, scientific uh, journals, Science and Nature, among the top 10 uh, area of research in the world. So uh, that's something that uh, is very exciting for us. These are our great researcher, Vicky Caspi, leading the group, looking at this incredible phenomena in our universe that we know so little about still. So. It's exciting to see the knowledge being advanced by these great researchers. Amazing, so much, so much going on. I don't know how you how you keep it all, uh, all, all, uh, all uh, you know, uh, remembering all of that. So yes, that's, well, that's, I think uh, great events have a bigger impact on your yes. memory, <laughs> <laughs> so they make it to the memory bank. Absolutely. Well, it's certainly the other big event, of course, is is McGill's bicentennial, and this year marks McGill's 100th homecoming. What are your thoughts about these two milestones? Uh, the first one, 200 years, can you imagine? I think we sense that when we come to McGill, that this is a place that has been built over a long period of time. And uh, there are great builders that have been there as part of the McGill history. So it's a great occasion to celebrate our great builders. It's also an occasion to reflect on our past. We've learned a lot. Uh, from what we did in the past, the whole society, but McGill in particular. And we've learned where uh, we need to make change and commit uh, to uh, values that are important to us. So I think looking at the past is a chance to do that, to reflect, to celebrate, but also to reflect. And for me, what's exciting is that we're starting a new century. And so we're starting a new century with these uh, uh, thoughts in mind. Uh, how can we, I'll use the phrase that has been used often uh, at McGill, I call it building forward better. Building forward better because that's what we need to commit to. You know, some people will say, well, this is not a great time to celebrate a pandemic, uh, to celebrate during a pandemic. Mm -hmm. But for me, I think it's been uh, the contrary in some ways because the pandemic has shown us so clearly how we need to build forward better, what we need to do, how we need to come together as humans living on this planet 
to better protect each other, but protect the planet. So it's a great moment of reflection. And I uh, always uh, think of Professor Teller, our great philosopher, who uh, urge us to use that moment to stand up and be there to build better in the future. And that's an important call for each one of us. And of course, the 100 year of the alumni and the homecoming, 100 years where people have come together. And it shows, I think, the attachment that people have for our great university, that sense of being part of a community and wanting to contribute to this community is great because that's another thing we've learned during the pandemics. We all need to belong, to belong to a community. And we can do it in different ways, we can, but belonging to a community worldwide is I think a great, great uh, privilege in addition to belonging to our local communities. We have this a privilege of being able to, to belong to that great community. So I'm very appreciative of that sense of belonging that has been built at McGill over the last 100 years. Thanks for your reflection on sort of the 100 years of homecoming and 200 years of McGill. How about your experience as you're an alumna, yeah. your experience as a student, how is that different today? How are students today living on campus versus what you experienced back uh, when you were in, at McGill? Yes, well, I'd like to point to things that are similar but different, similar but different. And I remember the sensation of arriving on campus the very first time. And you walk through these rotted gates and you're nervous. I'm, I was nervous, I must say, intimidated. And, uh, and of course you you're arrive and you think that uh, Everybody else is so much smarter than you are. So you're intimidated not only by the profs, but by the other students. You know they're all extremely talented. And that feeling that maybe you made a wrong decision, you're not going to make it true. But it becomes very quickly uh, something that is exhilarating. So it turns from the intimidation to the exhilaration. Because you realize that, in fact, yes, you're among very, very smart people. But there's a sense of learning together. There's a sense that we're there for the same reason, which is to learn together. And that people are very generous in having uh, that approach to learning and to do it together. Now, something that was maybe specific to me is I didn't speak English very well. And very, very quickly, those of us who were in the same situation, Franco found didn't speak English. We, we had a, a study group very, very quickly because if you had look at my notes from these days, you'd see that I miss about half of the words. So I had to fill in the blanks <laughs> and the group would get together. So it became very quick that we were learning together, helping each other and having a great, great time because uh, we were part of a, a community very early. So that was good. And I think students today uh, probably have that same feeling that they're a bit nervous when they arrive or maybe intimidated. You know, when people tell you, you're joining the venerable McGill, it's kind of intimidating, I think. But they quickly realize that under these kinds of words, there's an institution that has a real, a real soul, a real life, and, and that people are part uh, of this institution. And also, and I've mentioned that very often, we call the entrance to the main campus, the rotting gates. And I quickly realized they're not gates, they're doors, because they open the world to you. They open to so many opportunities for you. And most of them, uh, certainly for me, when I arrived, I had no clue I would have these opportunities at McGill. I had no clue, for example, that some of my professors would be uh, the top, top people in the world. And I can tell you the excitement when I was a student at McGill as an undergrad, to have Nobel Prize winners in chemistry and uh, come to my lab and sitting with me and saying, what, what are you doing? What is your experiment? And so on. It was something I had not even expected. And I think this is true today, but even bigger. Because in my days as 
a student, the world was a little bit smaller. What I mean by that is uh, the world of universities like McGill was mostly the world of Western uh, communities and Western universities. Today, it's the whole world that's open to you. And you have so many more tools to connect with the old world also. So we see that with our students, that they're connecting globally. I mentioned one project, and in fact, it was done with our students. Uh, it's around the uh, UN Sustainability Goals. So we have uh, worked with colleagues from around the world, from the US, South Africa, from the UK. Uh, we're building a project of bringing students together, a study abroad experience, but in the virtual world. Okay. And the students are creating this course uh, from all over the world, and it's centered around the UN sustainability goals. And it's amazing to see that for our students, this is completely natural. It's completely easy. They blend in so well into this world of globally connecting. So it is, I think, for them, what I think of McGill as open, connected, and purposeful, even more so than it ever was right. when I was a student there. That's, well, and you know, and I think that as, as we're looking ahead now to McGill's third century, and you know, these students coming back to campus and experiencing what you experienced yeah. as, as a student, oftentimes you, you, you say, you have a quote and a phrase that you say, McGill the Great, McGill the Good. Can you tell us what that means and why it's important? And I mean, I think you kind of expressed some of that yes. in, in, your, in your reflecting on, uh, on your time at McGill. But This is, I think, for me, our aspiration for the future, the most important thing we can do. Um, the phrase, McGill the Great, McGill the Good, came to me from Principal Emeritus Bernard Shapiro. And I remember when he mentioned that, and it was like a, f a flash in my mind, that is exactly what we need to do. We talk often about McGill the Great because we have so many people who've done great things at McGill worldwide. I think, of course, I mentioned Professor Taylor. He's viewed as one of the most important philosophers in our world today. I mentioned Vicky Caspi and her great work on the fast radio bursts and the neutron stars. There are many, many people who've achieved greatness, excellence. And there are people, it's, it's part of the Megal culture to push yourself for excellence, to push yourself to do uh, the best you can. It's part of our professors, I think, uh, culture, but also of our students. But what I realized when the principal emeritus Shapiro said that, Miguel the Great, Miguel the Good, was that we need to do even better. It's not good enough just to be great. It's that strange thing to say, but it's not good enough because we need to be great to do good for the world, to do good for the society, to do good for our community. In so many ways, doing great things is also doing good. And of course, today we realize that more than ever, that the world needs so much knowledge to face a lot of the issues that we have. We need greatness. We need that ambition from people to do the best they can and pursue new knowledge in the most ambitious way they can, but it is to do good. And so when I heard that, I said, this is the call to action for our third century at McGill. It's to be McGill the Great, McGill the Good. And it's always in my mind. I will, I will certainly remember that and keep that, and keep that top of mind, certainly, as, uh, as we go through this and continue to go through some of these challenges of the pandemic. And I remember last year when we, we chatted, um, if people were still in lockdown and things mm -hmm. were still kind of, you know, le confinement, as we oui. called it here, here in Quebec, and, and uh, looking for des loisirs and looking for yeah. things to do and we we chatted a little bit about some of the, the some of the books you were reading yeah. and some of the movies that you were remember last year i think you um, you had said that you had read uh, la peste and oui. the, the plague or reread it of course yeah uh then the antigone and oui. uh, and i believe you were also you know the music you were listening yes. to some chopin and uh, les feuilles nocturnes so what are your recommendations this year for uh ah, for alumni great and, recommendations there's a book that has been published very recently by Dany Laferriere, 
and the title is Un Petit Traité sur le Racisme. You know, Daniel Ferrière, I, I now call him an alumnus of McGill because he got an honorary degree from McGill. Danny is one of the most important writers in the French literature. He's a member of l'Académie Française, which is a, a big uh, a role, but a big honor also. And uh, Danny came to Quebec from Haiti, and uh, he wanted to share some of his reflections on racism, something he knows a lot about, uh, being a black person. And what I find about the book is that here you have one of the greatest intellectual writer in our world, and he writes this book with enormous honesty, simplicity, and intelligence. Because the reason why he wrote the book was to talk about this very important topic in a way that people can relate. And what was interesting when he published the book is he said uh, that he wanted it to be just very short passage. So you have less than a page on a topic because he realized if you're a 16 year old, it's unlikely you'll want to read a book of 600 pages on the topic. So if you have this in petite capsule, <laughs> les gens vont le lire. Alors c'est un livre magnifique, vraiment. Mais c'est un livre qui nous enseigne beaucoup sur uh, les relations entre les gens, en particulier le racisme. So that's my book. My movie, it's not a new movie, but I've watched it. It's the one movie I've watched most often. I don't usually watch movies uh, more than twice, maybe, but this one I've watched more than twice, and it's Arrival. C'est Denis Villeneuve. And Arrival is a science fiction movie. I think many people may know that the latest movie from Denis Villeneuve is June, which is uh, coming out now. But Arrival is about aliens who arrive on Earth. It's not a topic that I would usually be very interested in, but I gave it a trial because it was uh, rated as a very good movie. And what impressed me in the movie was, I won't tell you all, but it's a splendid movie, so I, I recommend it. But uh, one of the person who's, uh, who's retained to meet with these aliens is a linguist because they don't understand anything that these aliens are saying. They have a completely different way of communicating. Mm -hmm. So a linguist is... From McGill? No, okay. it's actually... <laughs> but no, 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 you're toujours un lien McGill. Okay. I have, faut que je vous dise, Luciano, my family makes fun of me because they say, ah, n'importe quoi, ah, il y a McGill. Ah, le vaccin Moderna, ben, il y a McGill. Euh, alors, Bien sûr, toujours... absolument. Oui, il y a toujours quelque chose de McGill. Mais ici, on a une de nos professeurs à McGill, Jennifer Coons, who, was, uh, uh, who worked with uh, Amy Adams so that she could really think and behave like a linguist, which was really nice. But here's the thing. The linguists in the movie, they meet the aliens, of course. Everybody is totally... Uh, worried, they think they might pollute the earth and so on, and they think they may kill uh, the people who are interacting with them, so they're highly protected and uh, so on. But there's one scene where she looks at these aliens and she says, human, 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 because she wants to tell them who she is, what she is. And uh, another scene where she removes her helmet and her colleague is absolutely terrified. He thinks it's the most dangerous thing to do. And she tells him, they need to see my face. And those two moments to me were very, very important moments in the movie. But also, I kept thinking about this in the pandemic. Human, human, you know? This is who we are. And this is a moment that calls on us to be human and to share our humanity. And they need to see my face. I haven't seen during a long period, too long a period of time, the faces of people. I see them on Zoom, I see them with masks, and I understand the importance. When we're sitting here, the mm -hmm. two of us, we're distanced, but we don't have masks. It's wonderful. And so I keep thinking about this movie. It's a beautiful movie. And now for the music. Now this will surprise you, but, you know, we had the convocations in the virtual yes. way. Well, I suggest to all of our alumni, go see one of the convocations just to hear Hail Alma Mater, 
sung by our wonderful students in the Schulich School of Music. It's beautiful. Great. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, you know, one, one thing that struck me last year during our chat and it kind of reflecting on that, I thought I was really um, impressed and kind of and motivated. You, you motivated, motivated me and our alumni listening with your optimism. And so I guess my question to you is, what are your, any final words yes. for us as we, uh, as we wrap up our, our yes. discussion here? Well, I remember I told you I was an optimistic scientist. <laughs> so I remain an optimistic scientist, but I will say something here. As a scientist, I think we've uh, acquired uh, far more humility because uh, we, uh, of course, have faced an issue uh, that was unknown to, uh, well, there was some knowledge, but we realized also how much knowledge we needed to acquire. And that's important because that's what we're about in university. It's about acquiring knowledge. And we've learned how much we need to continue to do that, to be ambitious about acquiring knowledge, that this has to be one of our great aspirations. So I remain optimistic, but also, I think because of the role I play, I was able to see some silver lining in the crisis and some very inspiring and uplifting silver lining. Our community coming together, the number of people who participated, even though it was on the virtual uh, mode, to the life of our university, their generosity. You know, I have to tell you, we were in the campaign for the third century um, made by McGill and uh, our great uh, vice president, Weins Vice Principal Weinstein had said, the, lower your expectation. We didn't need to. People were so generous, generous towards our students right from get-go in the pandemics, helping us, helping the students who might face right. financial difficulty, and also contributing to some of the really big challenges of our world in environmental science and so on. So it's been really uplifting. I have the privilege of seeing the silver lining. And I think, you know, we all have to decide where we keep our sight. Do we keep them down where it's maybe a bit depressing? Or do we keep them up where there's silver linings and there's a North Star and there's all sorts of beautiful things? And uh, I like to keep my eyes up <laughs> to look at all of these things. And being part of the Megu community, I have to tell you, even during the pandemic, every single day, I have something that is uplifting that I learn about. Well, that's, thank you once again. Thank you very much for your time today and for this chat, uh, always appreciated. And I'm sure our alumni uh, both here in Montreal and across the country and around the world appreciate uh, your thoughts and, and getting up to, uh, to speed with what is happening at McGill. So thank you. And uh, once again, this has been a very informative an interesting discussion. There has been a lot of behind the scenes work done at McGill over the past months, and it's great for our alumni to get a sense of the incredible efforts of our community, our faculty, staff, students, and leadership, not only in dealing with COVID-19, but in positioning McGill for its next 100 years. I've certainly learned a lot about how McGill has been dealing with the many challenges of 2021, and I think we have an excellent perspective of what's ahead in 2022 and beyond. On behalf of all McGill alumni, I would like to express my thanks and appreciation for the work of Professor Fortier and her leadership team during our bicentennial year. Last but not least, thanks to all of you for joining us today. Just like at every homecoming, there's much more to enjoy and to explore from the comfort of your home. Visit mcgill.ca slash homecoming for the complete schedule of events and recordings. Merci de vous joindre à nous pour cet événement. Thanks for joining us for this event. Be well.